some samples of layering watercolors and it involves waiting for each layer to dry before you go over it with another layer. This paper is what I would call rough. So you can get some interesting sort of dry brush texture with it. It's fun to play around with, but you can also get a relatively smooth, flat background. You'll always have the texture of the paper, but I'm talking about no streaks from the paint. There's a little bit of a uh, sample of wax crayon, clear wax crayon. These next examples are just wet on wet, with a little bit of salt. And that involves just dropping the orangey red paint onto what I had already painted and it was still somewhat wet. And then it just bleeds out. You can get some really interesting results that way. This is a hot press smooth paper. The next example is hot press as well. Here I painted around the leaves and the flowers leaving the white. And I also scored it. I don't remember if I used my fingernail. I don't remember what I used for this, but you can see if you score it and it's still somewhat wet, um, the paint will kind of pool in there. This is also wet on wet, a little bit of salt, and then a sponge. I used a sponge for the, the grass. Just kind of had fun. But we use the white of the paper. We either paint around when we want to leave white or we use liquid mask it. This has a little bit of yellow added to it so that when you apply it, you can actually see it on the paper. Uh, when it's white, it's kind of difficult to see. This is also using liquid mask it. Uh, here I painted around the horse, the shape of of the horse and then I just painted inside the horse. I also painted the snow, um, snow on the branches. I probably penciled this in first, I can't remember, but um, it leaves kind of a cool, you can see how the paint just kind of sits on top and when you layer it, it has a, a, a very interesting effect. The paper does, uh, the paint does not absorb right into the paper like it does with the rougher. And here I have many layers, so you can kind of see the edges on the hot press, um, how it just kind of sits on top. Gives a nice crispy little edge, but you can see the layers too. Uh, the background I went over with multiple layers and then I also removed it. I did a lot of stuff to this just to show, you know, you can just keep going and going and going if you have a good quality paper. And this is where I just painted a little bit of blue and then I took a clean rag, cotton rag, and just blotted up uh, to make clouds. And I think they make kind of interesting fluffy clouds. Here's more scoring. I used to have, I don't know what it was, kind of a pick, hair pick for wigs or whatever. And then I would just scrape the paper when it was somewhat wet. You can see how when you get it, the, when you're doing it, when it's just the right amount of wetness, it, the paint, just the pigment pools into the uh, crevices that you created. Um, this tree here I did with clear wax crayon, a little bit of salt, did all kinds of stuff on this. This is many layers of paint, just having fun. I used a sponge. Uh, this is where I painted with liquid mask it, removed the liquid mask it, and then painted over it. You can kind of see where you could see the branches before. You can still barely see them, but it has a nice effect. Just having fun. That's hot press paper too.
Most of what we'll be doing, this is the exact paper, the Strathmore paper that you guys will be working on. You can see where I scored it with my, knee, my fingernail here. Um, here's an example of, I used liquid mask it around the outside of the giraffe. And um, here I just painted around it and I left a little bit of a white channel in between the, the two paint colors, did not allow them to touch. Uh, but inside that giraffe, I used salt, I used wet on wet. I just dropped in little dots of color while it was still somewhat wet. Here, I went back in after the paint um, was dry with the orangey red. Just kind of had fun with that. Uh, I think on this burnt sienna foreground, I think I used like a plastic. While it was still somewhat wet, I took some saran wrap and just kind of blotted it for that texture. And this one used a little bit of salt in the background. I did score the paper, but I think it was probably not wet enough. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I scored this a lot on his trunk and his face for the wrinkles. Um, very wrinkly, just kind of added to the texture of it. And then a nice orange background that gave it a nice contrast. Liquid mask it. Uh, I was a little bit rough with the liquid mask it because I wanted the paint on top to kind of show through a little bit in some areas. And then a wet on wet background. All the areas that are white, I painted with liquid mask it, and I will be demonstrating that. This little figure, I completely just painted around with liquid mask it, and then just filled that in with just a solid charcoal gray, kind of purpley gray color. And then when I removed it, it has this nice little crisp edge feel to it. A person walking through the snow. Um, this isn't quite finished, but you can see the layers. Um, and this is kind of uh, just waiting for each layer to dry. There's not really any wet on wet here. And, you know, I would just keep layering and building up the values and the texture, the little hairs. And you can see the detail when you allow the the layers to dry before you go back in. Here I outlined with a clear wax crayon and then I just kind of, that's the only resist I used on this, and then I just went in with wet on wet rose color, did the same with the leaves, and then I took that uh, hair pick and just kind of scraped it out of the background, added some interesting texture, and you can see how it just causes the the paint to kind of just bleed out. It gets trapped where you score the paper. Just kind of fun textures. This I had already sent you a sample of all the areas of white I had painted with liquid mask at first. Um, and then this little bird I painted around the outside of the bird with liquid mask it. And then I just kind of, and I left little areas on purpose so that the paint would kind of seep through and I don't know, just give it some movement and some interest. Um, that is crayon, clear crayon. And then in the paint area, I used a little bit of salt. I sent you these samples already, I think, except this one. I didn't end up painting inside this one yet. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. Uh, I just painted that whole area of the bird with liquid mask it. And then you can get quite thin lines with that mask it. And then where you see clouds, that is where I just uh, blotted it with a, with a cotton rig. And then it's kind of started to, the paint was wet enough where it kind of started to fill in almost in some areas, which I kind of ended up liking that. But I also like how a little bit of the blue background is seeping through the bird. Um, here I painted around the bird. It's the same image, painted around it with the liquid mask it. And then... Um, I just filled in, filled in the bird, had a lot of fun with the colors and 
put salt in there. Um, I don't know what else I did, but just let it, just colorful. And wet on wet, pretty much some of the areas I went back in before I removed the liquid mask it. And then I went in with sandpaper on the background. If you have a good watercolor paper, it should be able to handle a lot of abuse. Um, this is the one where I did not use liquid mask it to mask out the bird. I just painted the background around the bird shape. You can see the pencil in there. Sketched them out with pencil first. And then I went in and painted him after I painted in the background. Oh, and I did splatter before all that. I, I splattered the background with, um, put some liquid mask it on a toothbrush and just splattered it. So then, of course, before I painted the bird, I did remove any um, splatters of liquid mask it. So I painted the background first. And make sure when, you, when you're going to paint like a large area and you don't want to have a lot of movement in it, because once the paint dries, it creates, you know, where the two meet up, the wet paint with the dry. Um, if you don't want that all over the place, which I didn't, I didn't mind a little bit of it, but um, you want to mix a pretty good amount of your color so that you're not stuck with, oh no, I just ran out of paint, now I gotta mix that color and match it. And So just be prepared and know if you're gonna cover a large area, you need to mix up quite a bit of paint um, ahead of time, just so you don't run out. So I painted that first, then after that was dry, I went in and painted the bird. And this was a student who wanted me to paint him um, right on the spot. <laughs> Here are some different ways of mixing. Uh, the left column, I mixed on the paper and I let each layer dry first. On the right, I mixed it on the palette. These are the secondary colors. Um, and so I probably went in with some other stuff like salt or whatever, because usually when I'm demonstrating, I'm doing other stuff. I'm not just doing one thing. But here you do have to be patient. You have to let the yellow dry before you go back in with the blue. Same here, I used a, a different yellow. I used lemon yellow here um, with a blue that had a little bit of green hint. Here I used a, an orangey yellow, let that dry, and then I went back in with an orangey red, just layer on, on top. Um, same here, I went in with a, a rose, permanent rose, let it dry. Went back on top with blue that had uh, a hint of red. And these are all pre-mixed. So they're essentially the same color, but there is a difference. 